Boy, just be yourself. If people don't like you, if you're being yourself, fuck them. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of The Noise on iHeartRadio. Uh, Hollywood is not going to be with us today, but I definitely ask all the ear hustlers to send all your thoughts and your prayers his way. I'm sure he'll definitely appreciate it. Make sure y'all follow us on iHeartRadio as well as on uh, Instagram at Beat Network, Twitter at Beat underscore Network. And of course, check out the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Beat Network one. Uh, what else I got to plug? <laughs> the website, BeatNetworkOnline.com. Make sure you get all the content, all the information that you need from us. But we're still going to keep this show moving. Got a very special guest in the building. Uh, all of the ear hustlers, all the followers, you guys know, I come from a very prestigious school, the first historically black private university. So, of course, a lot of the ones that we produce from that school are all superstars in the making or like the gentleman I have in front of me is a superstar currently. Uh, <laughs> branching out to different ventures. Without further ado, I want to introduce the Turn Up Facilitator, DJ Muda. Hey what's now, going on, hey yo? Hey now, hey now, what's up, my boy? Chilling, Appreciate man. y'all having me today, man. Yes, sir. It's cracking. Appreciate man. you coming through. You know, I had to come show some love. You know. So, so let me ask because I hit you up uh, not too long ago, and again, I appreciate you coming through on yeah, such no short doubt. notice. No I hit you up not too long ago and said I wanted to get you on the show. We we're going to do Facetime, but then you told me you was in the city. Yeah. yeah. So what what brought you? Here to Vegas. Um, well, I'm always on the move, you know, uh-huh. making moves, Muda. And I, you know, I'm pushing my, my juice right now. So yeah. we out here uh, just pr- pretty much promoting the brand, um, you know, talking to promoters as well, because obviously I DJ. Definitely. So it's always just, you know, pushing the brand everywhere I go. So of I course. just to be in Vegas. And we here. And it's Definitely. Yes, sir. Now, the brand that he speaks of is Muda Juice. Again, this man is well versed in his business. Currently sitting in front of me, I have um, the blueberry Muda juice, green apple, and you said that y'all signature flavor, the passion fruit. Passion fruit yeah. So, um, got a couple questions on the juice. Uh, first right. of all, I guess we'll start with the obvious one that's in front of us. What is Muda juice? Um, well, I could give you a little bit of background on Muda juice. Muda juice is the brand. You know that you have our cannabis syrup. You know, Muda mm-hmm. juice is a brand, really, and it started with um, a party drink. You know what I mean? It was more of an alcoholic drink, okay. which was a passion fruit drink. You know what I mean? So, uh, and we started that, this in t- 2012. We was having Muda juice functions and mm. kickbacks and events. And it was a party drink, like I said, and it was a, a passion fruit based drink. You know what I mean? So, right. with you know time being passed and we here now i always wanted the passion fruit to be our taste mm. it used to have i mean it's not passion fruit but it has a passion fruit in it you know right. what i mean so that's the passion fruit base but so i always liked it that as the mood is used original okay taste. so anything that has to do with the brand and a flavoring it's always going to be up like a passion fruit taste or a dragon fruit you know exotic kind of taste right. like that you know what I'm right saying? right so, what's your what's your ideal mix what do you uh what do you um, put in the so, mood you so with our passion fruit um or with our just cannabis syrup period you, you know you mix it almost like a lean you know it's like a, a healthier way of lean got honestly. you okay so i like my favorite is a sprite remix or now that we in the holidays i brought some with me some sprite <laughs> you know it tastes real good uh with any flavor with the double cup i see yeah you know, and that's branded as well mood of juice on every, the cup everything everything has to be branded of course you know i mean so you got to do it right you know, so I like doing it with a Sprite, or if not, the uh, Fanta Pineapple is one of my definitely favorites. Whenever I tell a patient or somebody who buys it from me, uh, I let them know Fanta or Sprites is pretty dope. Or whatever your favorite is, you know what I mean? I don't want, you know, that's the medicine, but I always want it to taste good with whatever you like. So if you right. like Dr. Pepper, you know, people send me pictures mm. with Cherry Coke, you know what I mean? People put it in Minute Maids and Lemonades and all that. So mm. I just like the Sprite remixes and the Fanta Pineapple book. Really, it's about pres- personal yeah. preference. You can't go wrong with Sprite remix, honestly. Never, never. I was happy when they brought it back out. What it? It's called something different now. but it's Remix. Remix. Oh, it's just it's Sprite back remix, remix again? Yeah. Okay, but it's still sure. like that tropical flavor. Right. You know what I mean? And the passion fruit is a tropical flavor as well. Mm. Even with our blueberry or our green apple, you can still mix it with any tropical fruit and it's going to taste Good. I believe it, man. Shit look good just being a general syrup. Yeah, man. We got to post uh, something up while we here, man. Oh, shit. I'm with it. <laughs> it's the it's a healthy lean. It's, it's cannabis syrup. So, yeah. obviously, it's not uh, promethazine, coney, and all that other yeah. shit. So, I saw someone commented mm-hmm. on uh, on what you had going on, and I saw you shared it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you made, made him famous for making you famous as right. well. 
do you run into that a lot? Do you run into a lot of people saying that this is something that it's not, obviously? Um, well, I think with what I do or who I am and with anybody getting to a stature in, in their career or whatever, you're going to run into people who no Always. matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're going to find something negative to say about it. You know what I mean? If I'm a DJ and they say, no, I don't play their music. If I have a cannabis syrup, they're going to say it's healthy or poison. If I drop, it doesn't matter if my shirt, if I drop shirts, they're going to say the quality of the shirt's Ain't good. Exactly you know what I mean? Right. So no matter what, everybody, anybody who's, you know, chasing their dreams or doing what they striving to be better is going to find somebody or a speed bump. You know, that's of what course, I look at. definitely. So definitely, you know, it's just some way that's, you got to like, you know, kind of like entertain it, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like me, I don't kind of jump into it. When I always tell myself any hater, I'm not going to let my bad energy get into it. If anything, I'm entertaining it so I can, you know, like you said, you've seen it. You exactly, know what I mean? Right. So it just brings a little bit more. Promotion to me, all promotion is good promotion for exactly. music and DJ. Music. I say it all the time. You gotta have fun with it. Yeah, you have to. Have I fun always with laugh about talk. everything, but uh, for the most part, people who are really tapped in with the cannabis world and the TAC world, they know that this is the healthiest way. Especially these Moody juice because it's vegan, mm-hmm. it's organic, it's no chemicals, no cuts, no nothing. It's just organic flour and uh, fruit concentrate. That's it. Good shit. Yeah. So, um, speaking just in the general THC culture, with you being out in California, and obviously you know the weed culture is huge out there. I see a lot of posts from different cities. See Detroit. I think I saw Japan at one point. Yeah, yeah. So like, how are you tapping into all these different markets? Um, I, they actually tapping into me. Word. They're okay. Tapping into me. The, the word uh, and it's just getting bigger. You know what I mean? Because the cannabis world is bit is it's bit way bigger than California. I mean, right. yeah, you oh, say the yeah. mecca, but it's like it's a lot of places that people use cannabis. Period. And it's not mm-hmm. just smoking. People got to understand. We, when you hear TAC cannabis, it's not about just putting weed in a blunt right, or exactly. switcher and rolling it up and smoking. No, it's all type of ways. We got vape pens. We got. I saw that as well. Yeah, we Definitely. Have the juice. We have the edibles coming. We have different ways CBD as well. So we got different things you could do to medicate. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. people reach out to me in different places who want who need to medicate. They have these issues. They have back pain. They have problems. They're going through chemo. They need to pass kidney stone. They got PTSD from military experiences. Damn. And they drink that because it helps them get through their nights. They can sleep. Exactly. They can wake up not feeling groggy, not feeling like, oh, I smoked 100 blunts and I woke up like still high. Like you used to woke up healthy, ready to go continue your day. You know, and get I'm things drinking going, of course. Moody juice now in the middle of the day and I'm not passing out like off a of lean right. or leaned out or nothing like that. You know, right. so it's all it is is an edible that you can. Drink exactly, yeah. Versus eating, you know what I mean. You exactly. can control it, you know what I mean. You can pour the increments you like. It's like when y'all eat. go get the Rice Krispies and the cookies and all that other exactly. stuff. You know but what with the, even with those, when you eat it, you just consuming as many milligrams that that right. has. With that, you can kind of determine what you it's want a, yeah, by definitely. pouring it in. If you don't want to pour, because the, the metabolos will take you out. <laughs> I've been I, I'm not even a, a big times. a big super super fan of just big edibles like that. But I know mm-hmm. I am a fan of alternative health healthy ways to you know. Get my pain relief. Of course, you feel me. So if that takes eating edibles or drinking Muda juice, then that's what I'm gonna do. No. So what's the uh, what's the best way for people to find you, find the Muda juice, put them orders in? Because obviously you're moving state to state, country to country. Muda juice at Muda juice on Instagram is mm-hmm. the best way to reach out. Or our Big Cartel page, which okay. the links are in the Muda juice page. Uh, Muda merchandise at Big Cartel dot com or something like that so that's what that is and um we are in a few dispensaries we trying to right now we just trying to branch out and get into the cities that people want moody juice in. right you know so we're in vegas we just left detroit last week in, in ohio as well you know what i mean so we just trying to transition we're gonna hit the south soon too and these are the cities that weed is legal right or, or cannabis use is legal you know what i mean so where the dispensaries are Sooner or later, you're going to see the Moody Juice in there. We're going to start hitting Washington State and mm-hmm. all these other medicinal states that use cannabis, you know. So okay. at the, in the meantime, hit up Moody Juice, at Moody Juice on IG. Um, my personal IG is at DJ Muda, you feel me? And we can contact through DM. And you got to be at least 21, you know what I mean? We of can't course. Do, we can't yeah. do, you know, obviously. And uh, you got to be definitely a medicinal user. We don't want to give it. I mean, it's for recreational use as well, but we mm-hmm. want to make sure this, the mood juice is helping people get through exactly. pain and stuff. What you made it for. Through. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Definitely tap in. Make sure y'all write everything definitely. down. We are going to go back to that uh, towards the end of the show. Um, yeah, you just said you were out in Ohio. I was seeing pictures, so you did yeah. homecoming back at yeah, uh, back yeah. at the Woo, right? How yeah, was that? Yeah. That was it's always a dope experience going back home, mm-hmm. especially knowing that I started right. at the Woo. Right, started, right, right. For people who don't know, I started DJing at Wilbur Force, and uh, it's just a full circle going back and, and you know giving back to you know seeing people that I started this with. You know, you when you go to college, you meet and you build relationships with a lot of people that 
is beyond school. Right. You feel me? So oh, it's a life, lifetime. Definitely. Especially Wilberforce. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? For anybody who knows, Wilberforce is small. So everybody who's there, we close. You know? So if you got your homies, those turn into your brothers. And right, exactly. Or your sisters. So, yeah, it's always dope going back to um, give back and do what I love and get paid, obviously. Oh, naturally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, speaking with that, just kind of, um, we're going to get to uh, your start at mm-hmm. Wilberforce. But um, give me some background on you. Like, where are you, where are you originally from, and what, when did you start getting interested in the DJing business? DJing, well, I'm originally from San Bernardino, California, by okay. way of the west side. Um, a little town, a little city in California, you mm-hmm. know, about an hour away from L.A. Uh, and I didn't start even thinking about DJing, honestly, until I got to school. Mm. I've always been, you know, somebody who was trying to make money, you know, legally, Maybe sometimes, you know, legally. Fast cash, of course. To. But um, no, nah, I always wanted to be a businessman. I went to school for business management. So it was always something, you know what I mean? I always threw parties in high school. So the party scene was always something. And then starting DJing was just somebody putting a program on my computer and me and my homies just throwing parties already mm-hmm. and me just kind of just jumping in. So you've always lived the turn up facilitator life. Yeah, for the <laughs> most part, I've always been an active party goer. Okay. You, or even party thrower mm-hmm. at that, you know what I mean? So it was always easy for me to know what music went right for the parties or what songs did the right things, you know, at right. the events or whatever. So just DJing, it was just easy. It, was, it wasn't easy, I would say, DJing, but it was mm-hmm. easy for me to just go into the game, you know what I mean? Right. So I just jumped into the deep end, you know what I mean? I had to swim. And around that time, because this was uh, 2008, yeah, when, it, when you actually yeah, got like started, started. Yeah, yeah. I know it was uh, it was you and a uh, uh, DJ or Quiet Storm at the DJ time, Quiet right? Storm, yeah, that's my yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you actually got started, I remember because it was um, I've been to a couple of the parties that had you DJing, and I remember it was a like slightly rough start. How'd you how'd you um start balancing that out, starting filling um, the crowd? I mean, with anything, with anything, doing, of course, it's chasing your dream is not going to be easy. Yeah, I would course. say if you could do something easy, then. Everybody would do it. Exactly. So, of course, I'm glad I came from those humble beginnings where right. I had a laptop and a broke-ass speaker from the thrift store. You feel <laughs> me? And, and and that humbled me to get better and, and see other people that's thriving and doing what they love, especially knowing being in Ohio, going to Wilberforce, that was only temporary. I knew I, being home in California was where it was going to be, so I had mm-hmm. to step up my game because even just knowing going to California – everybody's hungry for whatever they do. You know what I mean? So I just knew that if I was going to take it serious, which I knew I was, I just knew I had to get better each right. and every day. And having people like DJ Quiet Storm on the yard was like a friendly competition. You of know course, I mean? right. It was always making me get better. No matter where you at, if you got somebody that's doing what you're doing, you're going to want to be better. No matter if that's your homie or not, you're going to mm-hmm. want to be able to grow from from that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it was always good having somebody like Quiet Storm around in those days just so I can know where I have to be, what right. I have to do to get better. You know what I mean? So right. it was dope. Coming from that type of environment, from that humble beginning, you feel me? And you definitely use that time to hone in on your craft and create your sound. And obviously now everyone is is looking for that DJ Moodle party. Everybody's looking for that true yeah, turn up. And, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's a blessing to do what I love and, and come from that, you know what I mean, to literally not have to work a mm-hmm. nine-to-five job. I literally live my dream. You right. I mean, traveling the world, meeting new people, partying with people, you know what I mean, and... It's tight. It's real. It's real. That's one thing. Actually, I preach on this show all the time. Like you know, black people with a dream, black people with vision, and black people with drive. To turn that into your work, it's not yeah. even work. You know, yeah, you, you going out every day doing what you love to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just a, it's a dope experience. It's just mm-hmm. it's just hard. You know, what I right? Mean? That's course. what people say. Even when I started the juice, it was just like you're gonna run through a lot of speed bumps. But as soon as you get through them, it's just gonna be smooth down from here. there. From right. there. And, and even not even smooth, but it, you're still going to run into bumps here. But now you're going to know, okay, I've been through this. I know right. what to, to do. It. I know how to wiggle from there. I know how to dribble off that. You know what I mean? So that's what comes from starting from a, a humble beginning versus somebody just giving you everything you need. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't given the ability to do this or learn right. how to. Somebody didn't just teach me, like, Muda, this is how you do this. Like, right. I had to literally go out there and get it myself. Mm, of course. You feel me? So anybody in that position doing whatever they are doing they're gonna i feel like are gonna be a step above the next person because they started from nothing exactly for me so they are they really know how to get it you know what i mean mm-hmm. on top of that when i moved back home from wilberforce djing i got my equipment stolen twice shit really all of my equipment everything except my laptop you feel me twice yeah so it's been two experiences or two situations i would say where i had nothing I, mean, I feel like that's almost like the rites of passage for DJs. I, I, every DJ I know has had their equipment stolen at least one point in their yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. I feel like 
and not even just DJs. I, I don't just like want to but put it in anybody. Like you feel right. me? When you go through somebody something really bad, mm-hmm. if it's if it's not something getting your something stolen, you get hurt or some whatever. It's feel, you once you bounce off that, it's just like exactly. You've been you know through it. I mean? You know how to maneuver around. Exactly. It. So with me being in a position where I was like, damn, this could have stopped me because some people are like maybe this is maybe this, this is, is a sign. Good. Exactly. This is a sign. It's just you know, you already you went to school. Why don't you just work a real job? You could do mm-hmm. that. Like nah, like. This I went to school to do this. Right. You feel me? I went to school to get educated, but to meet these people and, and build relationships so that I can be the DJ or, or exactly. the business person I want to be. Not Shake to the right just hands, go of course. And work for the man. You right. feel me? That's not what I want to do. I haven't done it. Don't want to. You feel me? Now, you know, saying obviously nothing comes easy and you actually see the results of the people that get stuff handed to them. Right. You see the work ethic is trash. You see a lot of times the. Uh, the actual production itself is trash. So, you right. you know, with all the work that you're putting in, you're definitely reaping the benefits. But I can't lie. Looking at your social media, you make it look like the shit is smooth. You like you're having a great fucking time on and, everything that you're doing. <laughs> and that's the thing about um, just branding. Right. Marketing and running a business. You know what I mean? It's not just about the talent. Mm-hmm. Talent is 25% of this shit. Right. Um, you feel me? So when when I'm posting, if that because everybody's talented, quote unquote, right? Exactly. So if if I'm posting things and I'm posting things that don't look good, mm-hmm. or if my social media looks like I'm struggling, it's not gonna make you. You know what I mean? I want to motivate, exactly, or I want to motivate at that. So <laughs> so with that being said, Hashtag I'm gonna it. I'm gonna I'm only gonna post things that are relevant to to the lifestyle that I'm living and y'all want to see to motivate the next. If y'all see me struggling, then you're going to be like, I don't want to be a DJ because look at Muda's pay. Look at what he's doing. Like, right. He's crying because his equipment got stolen. Or he's mm. crying because people hating on his brand mm. versus, oh, no, nah, look at Muda because people hating on him. He's still bubbling. Or, still doing his you thing. You know what I right. mean? Or his equipment got stolen. He's still in the club the next day. Right. You feel me? So with that being said, social media and branding and marketing is the ultimate number one thing with building anything, you got to make sure, and you got to show the struggles as well, so people know and see. But that you it gotta, exists, yeah, definitely. But you also definitely have to show the great aspects of what you're doing because mm-hmm. that's what's going to enlighten and open people's eyes. Like, damn, they really like you just said. That's what you pointed out. You don't see, you know what I mean? Because I want that persona. I want you to see that DJ Muda. This is what, how we building the brand, right. Muda. Period. Whatever mm-hmm. Muda is bringing is. High quality, it's good, it's nothing too negative, you know what I mean? So that's why my social media is like that. I kind of try to not put too much stuff that doesn't have to do with the brand or the memes or the bullshit or the mm. politics or stuff like that. Because I can get into all the politics going on, but it's not, that don't have nothing to do with my brand. Exactly. You know what I mean? So exactly. I run that, my social media, like a business. My dad calls my cell phone my office because I run it like a business. Mm. You feel me? Everything has to get done perfectly, you know what I mean? So mm. that's how we doing it. No, nah, and I commend you on that one, bro. I tell people all the time, like when you're trying to establish that brand, you got to, of course, have as much of you into it as possible. So that way it removes that corporate look, right. I guess you could say. Right. But you got to make sure you're you're displaying your your brand correctly. And no one wants to see, you know, you going, even though they know you go through it because right. you're a human being. Right. But no one wants to see, you know, all the downsides. And they feel like when you come to DJ the party, yeah. that's what the party might be. Like, right, how do we know right. we catch a mood on a good day or a exactly. bad day? You know what like, I mean? You don't want to get too emotional. And I don't really want to put too much of my feelings social on my social media. Like right. My personal friends, people who know me, gonna know what I go through. Exactly. You know right. what I mean? They're gonna help me get through that that obstacle. But you, you seeing that? I mean, you may be able to help me, but you may be able to laugh at me. Mm-hmm. You may be able to like, you know what I mean? Because everybody, yeah, you never, on you never downfall. know true intentions. Exactly. You never know true intentions. So if I could put this thing, and people are gonna be on my side or try to help me, they really probably laughing at me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So even with that, that might not even be the case, but I don't even want to put myself in that situation. I'd rather, right. you know what I mean, talk to my close people who I feel comfortable telling that to or whatever, but my social media, that's strictly, strictly business. You right. know what I mean? And that's it. And I, I also want people to feel comfortable on there. When they see me, they see Muda. So when I'm coming around, they know, like, oh, I'm bubbly. I'm having fun. We turn up. This is what we do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't want to come, you to come to, I'm coming to your show, and you be like, damn, Muda might have a bad day today. So right. he might exactly. snap. He might snap on me tonight. You feel me? Versus, you know what I mean. So it's I, I just all positive vibes. All I can imagine vibes. being in your field that you know the, uh, the actual public appearance is made more like fifty percent of it. Yeah. If anything, just knowing. And I think with social media, it's my it may be seventy five percent. Right. You know what right. I mean? Because now that it, changed the landscape. Honestly, everybody sees everything going on. You know right. what I mean? Right. Even even with my competition, you know what I mean? Like I got to show the other DJs that are competing for my spot that I'm. Really doing it. Right. I'm really in that position you want to be in. And it, it's no shade or it's no, you know what I mean, I'm better than you. But at the same time, you got to understand that I worked hard to get here. Exactly. So you can't just come and, and undercharge 
just to get in my position because mm-hmm. no matter what, people know Muda and I built that name that when Muda's, no matter what I'm charging, no matter what time, when, no matter what, it's high quality. Right. You know what I mean? So that's just how it be. You know yeah. What I mean? I, so. yeah. Obviously, it's not any shade, but I know it's a lot of LA DJs right now that got handed those opportunities. Uh, and I'm not going <laughs> to say LA DJs because there's a lot of people that gets handed the position, but it's all about how long you doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Most people who get handed anything, they don't... You yeah, know, even when you get a toy as mm-hmm. a kid, just look at it like that. When you get something that you just give it to, you just break it. Versus when you worked hard for it and yep. bought it, you, you keep it Came longer. You take care it. of it. That's an you, amazing analogy, by the way. You know what I'm saying? So, so no matter what, no matter what you're doing, if you, it was handed to you, it's not going to last longer versus somebody who worked hard for exactly. it. Exactly. You know and saying? you owe no and one gonna, else for it. They're going to appreciate it. The person who worked hard is going to appreciate it more. Of course. Definitely, because I, I worked here to get here. So no matter what, you can't take this feeling away from me because right. I know how I feel to get to the bottom. You don't. You know? So so I was um, I was looking at your bio through uh, your uh, your Facebook page, and it said that one of, one of the turning points for your career was when you met with uh, 99.1's Diana Webb. Oh yeah, what happened with that? Um, that was shout out to Diana Weeby. She oh Weeby, oh, okay. yeah Weeby, yeah she doing her thing. Now she's not in radio no more, but it was dope experience because I was um, fresh from school. You know, I, mean, I didn't really being at school for so long. You know, what I mean, of course I was still from home, but I didn't have relationships. I didn't have people in the high high end plot spots to put me in a position. You know, what I mean, right. so it was dope to, for her to um, just kind of like take me under her wing, quote unquote. I would say I was just DJing a lot for her, doing a lot of events for her, doing um school tours and stuff like that. So it was just dope to get my foot in the door a little mm. bit, especially with somebody with radio, you know what I mean, right. so I could see the politics and see what's going on. So it was good and bad because I was understanding and seeing how it could be, you know mm. what I mean? I was understanding how good it could be and how you got to you have to have a mouthpiece, you have to know what to say, you got to know what to do, you got to know how to dress, you got to right. know all of that. You know what I mean? So that was a dope learning experience, especially being so young in, in the DJ world, you know what right. I mean? 2012 or 11 or something that happened. I was like, like six years ago. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So so much has happened since then, ups and downs. But from those experiences from then it was dope. You know what I mean? Because I I know you know what I, mean? I right. know how it was to wake up super early to get to events or flying, going somewhere, then have to come back fast. You know, on the train or something, right. get to an event. Like just a lot of stuff. Because at that same time, I was on tour with an artist named Problem when I was dealing with Diana as well. So I was low key on tour some days and have to come back and do a school event. You know what I mean? So right. it was a hectic time for me at that point. You know, I, mean, I didn't have everything together at that point either. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I still was in the bucket. I still didn't have all my equipment. I, needed. I didn't have everything. <laughs> I didn't have the people. I, you know what I mean? I, I didn't have the fans. I didn't have none of that. So it was right. just hard. Harder then. You know what I mean? But like I said, it was a dope experience. I learned from it. Um, I bounced from it and I'm here now. Of I'm course, still getting to it. Thing. Still getting to it. And I, that's actually the next thing I had on here because I, I also saw on there you did over 50 shows with Problem. Yeah, so how yeah, was that did. tour? Woo. That was dope. And it was just not a tour. I was literally his DJ for like a year, maybe. Really? A year, almost a, probably over over a year. Um, and that was dope, man, because I got to go to just so many places. I was able to go to E-40's house. Oh. Literally been to E-40's house. Was there for hours, chilling with him, made out of his refrigerator. What is his house like? I feel like E-40 lives like an extravagant lifestyle. Definitely <laughs> lives. He lives next door. Well, at the time. I don't know if he still does, but he was living next door to Gary Payton. Oh shit! So you know you got a it's a gated community somewhere up in the bay. Uh, you got to say where you going. You get there before you make you take your shoes off when you go to his house. All <laughs> white, literally everywhere is white. His studio is at his house though. You feel me? Take mm-hmm. your shoes off and walk through the white crib. You know what I mean? Let us go get some food. Big ass kitchen, big ass fridge full of food. You feel me? Um, Tell we, you know what I mean? So it was dope. Naturally, it was yeah. dope. It was dope, man. It was dope. And I was, like I said, this was the same time. I was fresh from the woo. I was mm-hmm. fresh back home. I'm meeting these people. I'm on the road. I'm I'm not really making too much bread from it. You know what I mean? But, but you're making the connections, I'm, which I'm is just, just as good. And I'm just living that experience. You know what I mean? Sometimes experience is bigger than anything. You right. know what I Because mean? you can't take that away. Like you, you had, I can tell you I've been to E40 House. I, there's millions of people who would love to do that. Of course. Would never ever be able to do that. You know what I mean? So, I, like I said, some experience is better than money. And that time period of my life was super dope. It was hard because I was new to it. I was young. I didn't know the politics. I didn't know how people moved. I didn't mm-hmm. know. But it was just dope just to be around that environment, meet these people, do these shows, meet these fans, see how these people fan out. I never seen fanning out like that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I, before that, I was just doing college events, you know right. what I mean? College parties. Calf events and the calf and just, you know fraternity events. And the calf events were, used to jump though. They used to be lit. They used to be lit. But there's nothing like doing a show where right. the fans is going crazy. Exactly. You know what I'm talking exactly. about going crazy. Literally You're reaching out to folks that you never had a conversation with beforehand, but then you get in front of them and it's a whole. It's and they like know all about 
you. The exactly. crazy part, I was meeting people that knew all about me because I was this DJ, and I never met them in my life. And I'm obviously still doing that now. Right. But that was just the beginning of it. Like, people were coming up to me saying, what's up to me? And I never knew them. Nothing like that. So, you know, it was just dope. It was dope. I'm glad I was able to experience that because that got me here for sure. How did you make that connection? With problem. With How problem, did you end up getting It was linked through Diana. That's when I was dealing with Diana. It was through Diana's D, uh, manager. Okay. So she was his. Her manager at the time was connected with a lot of people. So right. at the time, problem needed a DJ. You know, he had a song with uh, E Forty at the time that was bubbling. Right. The, um, the function mm-hmm. song. The function song. Um, so he just needed a DJ to go on the road with him, and they plugged me, and we we kind of meshed as soon as we met, and, and it just worked out for that time period. It worked out. So since this is around the time that uh, the Function record was buzzing, how did it feel performing that on stage? Like, lit, lit. I see you doing lit. the shows. And you normally, you know, you're behind the, you're behind the tables. Like, you got the mic yourself. I, man, so that's, lit. that's that why like? I love um, being on the road with Problem because he gave me like, you know, what I mean, I was lit. We used to right. be turning up, you know, shirt off. It would be lit. You right. know what I mean? Like I said, that was a big, big record at Huge, the time. Right, big record. So just to be a young DJ, fresh out of school, you know what I mean? And I'm getting paid. Even though it wasn't a lot of money, I'm still getting paid off one of the biggest records in America right now. Right, right, right. Like, that record was big. We did shows in North Carolina, Texas. I'm talking about Vegas plenty of times. The Bay plenty of times. L.A. plenty of times. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, the West was going to be it for sure. Yeah, so it was just like we was doing a lot of traveling um, off this record. And I'm just like, damn, this is tight to me. Like, you Mm -hmm. feel me? Like, this is what I want to do. Because at the end of the day, when I started DJing, the party scene is cool. And it's always fun, but I've always wanted to be an artist's, an artist's DJ, like just mm-hmm. being on the road, meshing with the artists and lit, being lit, turning up with the artists of to, course. to the concerts. You know what I mean? We still do that now. I pretty much captivated the, the club scene. That's pretty much mine now. So <laughs> it's really, really hard to say I don't do the club because that's what I, I, I am a club that's DJ. Yours, but right? I, deep down in my heart, I really just love being on the road. Even right. though it's harder, you know what I mean? Being on the road is just so much fun to me. Like it's just, the experience is dope. You get to meet so many new people. You feel I me? can so, imagine, you know, it being exhausting hitting all these different cities the setup the actual turn up itself breaking yeah. down and going from there um, the setup and stuff isn't too much harder it's, it's more just being on the road being mm-hmm. away from friends and family and eating you know what I mean I'm already, ah. and I'm already a skinny dude so I'm already eating junk food so <laughs> being that I have to consistently eat junk food there's right. no real food around and fast I'm not, I don't really do fast food um, that's just the hardest part you right. know what I mean just being away from the crib and you can't really eat eat and sleep in your own bed and right. you in and out of rooms and hotels and shit like that but you get used to it and like I said I, I, I like that experience so that's not too bad I could live with it you know mm-hmm. what I mean some artists they hate that and that's why I, they yeah, I've heard different stories that's for why sure. they don't be on the road you know right. what I mean so it's always about personal preference but I love being on the road I even without an artist I'm building a way to where I'm on DJ Mood and our brand is on the road constantly right. you know what I mean so I just like being around like I I felt like this, even with us, we could have did this any other way, but in person is better. Oh, it always works out better you know in I mean? person. So that's why just being on the road is better because now I can meet you, I can do it face to face, and we get mm-hmm. whatever we got to do. You know what I mean? So being on the road is cool, but I've run into plenty of artists that hate the road. Right. They hate the road. And, you know, they you deal with a lot on the road as well. But Outside of it being, you know, just strenuous and, you know, that emotional time away from your people, do you think a lot of these artists have an issue with being on the road just because they're lazy? Definitely, artists are lazy. Obviously, I've heard many the, stories. <laughs> Listen, and, and I might make a lot of artists mad. I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> the, most, not all, not most, but a lot of artists are fucking lazy as right. fuck. Why? Because their job consists of this: walk into the studio nine times out of ten. Most of them don't even write no more. They oh, think yeah. they can freestyle. So their job, besides being on social media stunting and faking it like they really popping, right. their job is literally to walk in the studio, record a song that they're either reading off their phone or trying to come up with in their head. Mm-hmm. Which does, I mean, it does take real artists. You know, right. I mean, it takes energy and time. But we talk about the average. Rapper. Like you just got in the booth. Like yeah, this is song number three. Average maybe. artist. The average artist. They get in there and they just, you know, they do their record and that's it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The only energy they have to spend literally is performing on stage. And they lo- pretty much love that. Right. So that's not really too much versus, you know, like a manager who got to get these shows for you. Got to do all this stuff. Who got to do all the paper. Who got to do all the running around. Who got to get the money from the promoter before mm-hmm. you get to the club. Who got to get the money, their deposit before you even book the event. You know what I mean? That's the manager. Make sure the tickets are good. We Make got sure the, the PRs. House is we good. got the marketers. Then we got the DJs who got to set up the sound. Who got to go to rehearsals. Who got to, you know what I mean? Most. Yeah, I want to say y'all got y'all own. Uh, 
um, things y'all got to stick with with these shows. Definitely. And even with an artist, like, for example, if you're a rapper and we have a big show or something we rehearse, nine times out of ten when we get to the show or the rehearsal, you're going to ask me, like, what do you think the show could be like? Because you're a DJ. You're in the scene. You know what they like from our music. So right. how should I do it? So nine times out of ten, we're helping build your set. We're rehearsing. We're breaking down. We're setting up. We're on the mic nine times out of ten because we're your hype man, too. Right. You know what I mean? So that's the DJ. Like, so every person in... I guess the rap game is busy except the rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right. that's another reason why you say they probably lazy on the road because they're not used to getting up all day. They're not mm-hmm. used to being, they got to do this. Because, you know, when you're on the road, you got to do interviews. You right, know what I mean? Like, right. like if I'm on the road and I'm coming to Vegas, I'm going to definitely stop at the beat. Like, right, you know course. what I mean? Like, that's what rappers do. They Before their shows, they're stopping at, they're doing, you know, sign-ins at stores. Maybe they're meeting with our radio DJs. They're mm-hmm. doing something. So... With that being said, you got to do a lot of moving around. And you're doing a lot of moving around on a weak, probably a weak stomach or not enough rest. You know what I mean? So for somebody who's McDonald's not, is bubbling, of course. You know what I mean? <laughs> are you, you sleeping on the tour bus? Are you sleeping on the hotel bed? So mm. which, that's not still good enough sleep for somebody who got to be up super early. So for somebody who's already lazy or not used to that type of lifestyle, they like, fuck all that. Right. I'd rather get shows at home. That's why some people are regional artists because mm. they're not ready to take that big leap to go across this, the nation because they're not ready for that. Mm. They're not, they not ready to put in that work. It takes right. work. You know, and I'm doing this this shit from a very, very small scale, and I can see. So I can understand how somebody who's trying to put an artist on a big show and they bullshitting because it takes a lot of work or takes a lot of time. And some of them niggas is lazy. Niggas like... Chief Keith was coming to his like video shoots late, so you know that niggas or just, missing them completely. Yeah, so it's just like you know niggas is just big. Bu- they just be bullshitting, it, right. high, fucked up. You know what I mean? Most of the time, everybody on the camp can't do drugs, but the artists and the mm-hmm. artists doing them drugs is fucking them up. Right, exactly. So it's just a lot of things that play in a part of why these artists aren't on the road or why they lazy. Sometimes they're not even lazy; they just lean the fuck out. Right, they right. Can't, <laughs> they can't do. They want to do something, literally. but they can't move. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a lot of different situations, and I can't speak on on everybody, but I know a lot of artists are lazy, oh, and, and most of them that aren't even in the game yet. That's why I be telling them, like, y'all niggas ain't ready for this shit. Right? You like you're me? barely locally famous. Barely. You're barely, and the shit is whooping your ass. Like you're so happy <laughs> that you are locally famous that right. you don't. It is blowing the roof off your head. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So that's why you're you're gonna stay famous for three six months and that's it. And then that's it. That wrap up. And that's it because one you either got into the clout of being locally famous and you know what I mean and that was it, or you just got too lazy to expand your brand because once you get to a position, even DJ Moodle, we got to a position where it was like, damn, we here, we're popping, but how do we get here? Exactly right. So some people get stuck in that bubble where it's it, how do I get my I'm popping here, but how can I get? Outside of popping, like, and sometimes that's even hard, right? You know what I mean? So, it's a situ- different situation, right? But most of them are lazy, and I say that <laughs> for sure. circling back around, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, and and I appreciate you also saying, you know, uh, moving to the different levels. Do you ever feel you'll get to a point where, like, okay, I'm comfortable here, this is good, anything higher never. than this? I would my never man. get comfortable, my man, <laughs> and that's exactly why the fuck we keep doing what we're doing, mm-hmm. the, our Muda brand and pushing with because. I could be touching so much bread, and that's still not enough. Because now I'm, I want to do this. Now we right. do. most people get too comfortable. Once you get too comfortable, then you not you stuck there. Exactly, because someone can come around and do exactly what you're better. doing, and they could feel like it's I don't doing give a fuck. What nobody say no. There, somebody can do better. There's somebody that's doing something better than you. Whatever you do, I'm right. a DJ. There's somebody that's a better DJ than me. Right. You're a radio host. There's somebody that's a better host than you. So you have to work hard. Right. Exactly. You gotta go. You gotta keep. Switching up your lane, you got to keep switching up your formula. You got to keep doing what you got to do to stay relevant. Right. And that's the number one thing. We go back to the problem situation. That was the very first. That's why I fuck with problem. You know, even with the situation, whatever happened, the very first day I met the nigga, our conversation went like this. I'm like, damn, bro, you like super relevant. Like, right. that's popping. Like, how do I get like? He's like, bro, it's not about getting relevant. It's about staying relevant. Mm-hmm. That was the very first thing the nigga told me in 2011 or something. I never would ever forget that shit. Ever. That shit stuck in my head forever because he's right. Now that's the gospel, for sure. You feel me? Like, it's not, the hard part ain't getting relevant, it's staying it's relevant. keeping it going. They, they talking to have, the same conversation is happening right now with Designer. Like, he's trying to uh, go off the fact that he's not a one-hit wonder, that he got more music coming and stuff like that, but nothing's buzzing like Panda. The cast didn't even know he had a whole tape come out. So staying relevant is the most important thing. Especially when you get on... A, and it's even harder when you get to these scales. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like I said, we here, we trying to get there. But, like, if, if we pop in here, damn, how can I get popping all here? It's going right. to be hard. Or how can I top this? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So sometimes it's hard, like, to do things like that, especially if you ain't really got it like that. Right. Like, if you don't got the talent or you don't got the workmanship or if you don't got the team. Right. If you don't got none of that ready, then you're going to be stuck. 
No. I had like a, a, a list of questions, but you, something you're saying is kind of like drifting to other places. I want to get your opinion on something else. Uh, with that exact mindset, with the importance of remaining relevant, and since you're, just, you're tapped into all the music scene being a DJ, how do you feel about some of these new artists and what they're doing? Do you think they're creating a path for continued success, or do you think we only got them for like five, six years maybe? Man, these new that's a good question. I don't know, man. But the thing is, I think that the, the way the industry is built now, the way everything is going, you're only put here for a few times, right. especially as an artist. Why? Because music changes. All and it's not time. even about the artist. Mm-hmm. Music, the, t- the tone, the popularity, the type of music literally changes this fast. Right. So like you said, we was Brock and the Panda. The reason we not fucking with designers is because we don't like that sound no more. <laughs> right. It's not even about him. That wasn't even that long ago. We don't like that. That sound is old. Right. You feel me? So with sound changing so fast, and most of these rappers aren't artists, mm-hmm. this is the difference between a rapper and an artist. Right. So if you're not an artist and you can adapt like a future or a hove or, mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean, people who can literally adapt their flow to whatever or their flow is just so unique that it won't go anywhere, right? then you're, you're destined to be here and be gone. That's why you have to have different little situations are you going to be because music can't music is built not to last no more not right. in this day and age we, we won't see no music like a this is how we do it where we can play it now timeless music of course we won't see that no more yeah i, I mean I, we will but we won't see it how we were seeing it about 15 years ago i don't even see I, like, I can't think of too much right now that 10 20 years down the line we're telling the kids like oh this was the shit back when we were younger because we, music changes so fast bro true these dances changes, like mm-hmm. you feel me. We had a point where dancing, these dancing situations with, like you know, when the songs come out with a dance, they would last for a minute. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But now it's like rolly, 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 then hit the dab, and it's like literally. So that's just for the kids. Now we got every aspect of sound for every age group is changing fast. Right. You right. feel me? And then on top of that, people are growing, and their ear is changing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, the listeners' ear changes damn near every other week. Exactly. And then with these these different platforms like Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal. So many people got so many ways to push their music. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to hear music from people from South Africa now. You know what I mean? We were at one point we couldn't hear music from people who were living in New Jersey. Right. I mean, What's my the, man? Uh, the man's not hot, dude. A big shack or whatever. <laughs> he has a little buzz right now. That's, and, and it's because of social media. <laughs> of course, social media makes the world so much smaller. Right. So now with so much sound and so much artists coming out, you know what I mean? Sound is switching fast, mm-hmm. quick. You know what I mean? So I think with what you asked. Um, I think they're built for less than five years. I think they're built for a year, for a season. It seemed like while they're here, though, their business is straight. Like, you see, they're, they're getting the sponsorships. They're getting they behind these big corporations. Like I said, we, we are in an age where things change so fast. But with while it's hot, we're going to bust you, it. you got to take open. advantage of it. We're exactly. going to bust it wide open while it's, while it's hot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we're going to get all the endorsements, all the sponsorships, all the deals, whatever, for right now. Mm-hmm. Until somebody comes hotter. Exactly. Until something comes new. Come, something comes different. Like it goes back to social media. Social media makes some things so relevant so fast. So mm-hmm. one day it could be popping, tomorrow's not. We put right. our money into today, to yesterday. That's cool. Mm-hmm. We're gonna put our money in this tomorrow. That's cool. People who got money, they don't care because they going with whatever's hot. Right. Call them the culture vultures. Oh yeah, of you course. know what I mean. So they whatever's popping in one second, they're ready to jump on it real quick. Right. So you know, so. I don't know. Things just moving too fast. We in an era where things just move uh, quick, move like, fast. Um, we, we got robots getting citizenships now. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just like you got to move fast and you got to jump just on like the it. movies. You got to jump on it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you got to be able to whatever you're doing to switch it up or or go with whatever is going on at that time. Even if it's not culture vulture or copycatting, you got to still be able to adapt. Right. You know what I mean? If you, if your brand or your business or your music can adapt to the to the time period, even mm-hmm. if the time period has changed in 24 hours, then that's it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you see a lot of cats trying to come out and mimic a lot of the artists that have the longevity or trying to mimic and the artists who's buzz for that time ever. They barely get on. Yeah, they for don't like That's what I'm saying. They don't like These are because they're not artists. They're rappers. Right. You know what I mean? They're copycatters. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So the, if they're not putting the art, an artist is making art. Right. You know what I mean? If I don't like your art, then you not a, you're not an artist. You're not an artist, bro. Period. You know what I mean? So it's like if you come in copycatting somebody else, then we're going to really fuck with the original. Right. You know what I mean? Fuck with the original even harder because I feel like Future then came up a little more since the design came out. more. Like, you feel me? There's more people that sound like Future. Future. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what definitely. I mean? So it's or the, like, uh, the Migos flow is everybody trying to tap into right yeah, now. Yeah, everybody want the Migos flow. But you can't, you can't, those are undeniable. These are people that had that flow, had that style before. Nigga, even if we never found them, they would probably still be rapping like that. Exactly. You know what I'm right. saying? So if you don't have your own uniqueness to what you're doing, then you're just going to be another 
a leaf on a tree. So with um with music's consistent evolution, how are you as the DJ able to adapt and move with the times and still keep the crowd in control? Oh man, um, adapting is the hardest part about DJ shit. Because mm-hmm. like I said, there's so much music, so much platforms. We I'm trying to fucking listen to shit and download shit almost every day. Right, but. On the upper hand, I'm the DJ, so I ha- I'm the gatekeeper, so I right. can control it. Mm-hmm. So I can tell you, like your shit not hot, and it's not getting played. <laughs> you know what I mean? Realistically, mm-hmm. oh of course, your shit not hot. You know what I mean? You, I'm not gonna jeopardize my my position as a as a prime time DJ mm-hmm. because your music is weak. You know right. what I mean? I can't play your shit because you think it's hot during twelve or or eleven thirty to one, mm-hmm. and it fuck up the whole vibe of the club. Your exactly. shit is not it. You know what I mean? So that's the good thing about being the DJ, like. You can control the vibe. If I like it, then I'm playing it. Right. Period. I don't care who rapped it. I don't mm-hmm. care who sung the song. If I like it, I want y'all to like it. And that's the good thing about being a DJ. We can control the tempo. You know what I mean? But for the most part, I'm tapping into all the platforms. I'm also, sometimes I jump on social media and ask, like, what songs y'all listening to right now? Right. What right, y'all right. like? You know what I mean? Because everybody's listening to something different. Right. And then as a DJ, you got to also know your environment. You can't be in a club playing something that's hot. But that's hot only in a car. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Some songs that it's super hot, but I don't want to hear it in a club. I only want to hear that shit when I'm driving, bumping. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just, you know, as a DJ, you got to know all these you know, all these things. You know what I mean? So Have you, um, I'm pretty sure you have being, being a DJ, but how many cats have approached you to break their record and you just, you Every saw day. no quality in it? Every fucking day, bro. <laughs> Y'all should see the, <laughs> the irritation on his face behind it. Keep going. Every day I run into niggas that's ready to pay, that's mm-hmm. ready. And I'm, at this point, bro, And the, I used to do this shit where it's like, okay, pay to play, you feel mm-hmm. me? Um, pay, pay me whatever I, I charge you and we'll run your record, you know what I mean, see how the crowd likes it. But I start running to so much shit, like, you know what, I'm not even doing that shit no more. Why? Right. Because, one, I don't really need the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? For two, it's just like, Y'all niggas think I'm about to play y'all shit when every when a club is popping, when everybody want to hear the hottest records. Like right. I, can't, I literally can't jeopardize my career for and your record. squeeze your record in, right. Especially if it doesn't have that tempo. I tell people this. The the crowd and the people going to make me play your record, not right. you. Because there's pe- plenty of people that I don't even know. People bump. I'm like, damn, who is this? And mm-hmm. it's a local nigga. Right. Or a local female, I'm like, oh shit, start playing a record. Because why? Because that's what the crowd want. I'm giving the people what they want. I'm not, right. I'm never gonna turn into that DJ that the rappers love, oh, that the course. artists love. Like, that's no, I'm not. That's I'm suicide. The, I'm the people's DJ. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And, I, and that might be a reason why I ain't really done radio and shit like that. Because, you know, you gotta have that type of situation where the artists love you. You know, mm-hmm. like, I'm not with the, I'm not, I'm not biting my tongue for you, niggas. I don't mm-hmm. give a fuck. Like, you feel me? Like, because I got my wave, I got my lane, I got, so you And it's me? working. And it's working. So it's like, I, I'd rather have the people fuck with me. Right. You feel me? So if the people love this song, that's what they're going to hear. Right. Nigga, I don't give a fuck how much you got. You feel me? I mean, no, I'll take that back. I, if you do got some dough, we can <laughs> if make it. the bag is decent Yeah, enough. we can make it work. <laughs> but for the most part, you little bag carriers, nah, we're not happening. <laughs> that's not that's not happening, period. But, like, um, I pretty much go off the crowd. Like, you right. know what I mean? Like I said, I'm on social media. So if it's local niggas that's popping, nine times out of ten, you don't even have to reach out to me. Right. The streets are already telling me. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And when I say the streets, I'm talking about via social media as well. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Just people are telling me this is the song. You know what I mean? And you got to be smart. As a DJ, do your homework. When I'm in Vegas right now, I'm going to be listening. Mm-hmm. What the DJs is rocking, what don't, the crowd's playing. Don't listen you know. too hard. The radio scene out here is kind of trash. Not even the radio. Not, not, not the radio. I'm talking about the club scene because, you know, I'm mostly right, in right, the club. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not going to play every single song I hear, mm. but I'll just tap in to see, okay, okay, I see the crowd moving to this new song. Mm. Okay, it's finally getting – because if we get, get into a time period, so much new songs, it's, it's hard to play new shit from pe- popping people mm. because you just don't know. It's so much music. Literally, right. Chris Brown just dropped a – 45 record album. <laughs> that two day uh, long Who album. Who the fuck, what song do I play in the club that, you feel me? Because some people probably even heard that. This is number 38. Like, right, they haven't got that they far. Haven't exactly. Got there yet. So it's like, you just gotta, you guys gotta know it. That's, right. And that's the hard part about the DJing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just knowing what to play at the right time. You know what I mean? So it comes it comes with its ups and its downs. Of course. You know of course. I mean? So uh, kind of, <laughs> I guess, circling back to my questions. I saw that um, you did some opening shows for, for some names, man. Tiger, YG, Kendrick. Uh, who yeah. who are some more of the cats that you actually uh, work with? Yeah, I, I think I gotta rewrite my bio because that's that's oh I done so I just did a show with Too Short two days ago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I was gonna I, I was gonna get get Too around Short to that one with him. Um, I done shows with Nip. Um, damn, if I go through my phone, I've literally done show. Oh, Cash Doll, T Grizzly. Ah, okay. Shit, like this last two years, I would say have been crazy. Mm-hmm. Like we've been bringing a lot of artists to um, the IE a lot. So I've been doing a lot of. 
fuck, I done a lot. I could just go through pictures of shit. Like, cause mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't even be posting. I don't want to flood. Exactly. But like, like even the flyers I be posting most of the time. If um, I post a flyer with an artist that's coming, nine times out of ten I'm doing his set. Yeah, right. Because I'm usually the house DJ. Like we got Money Bag Yo coming to the IE on Tuesday. You know what I mean? Okay. So I probably do. I usually do a lot of people say I'm gonna start do, posting more just so that, and I'm gonna re, definitely rewrite my bio so I can update it. But I've done, <laughs> or, um, fuck. and that's why you're here too to get the people updated. Yeah, yeah. Because so yeah, I just did the I just did the High Life Festival. Okay, that shit was oh, big. Okay, shit, I, I was supposed to go out to that one. Yeah, shit. that shit was big. I've been doing a lot of weed festivals, a lot of artists. You corrupt. I've done shit with corrupt. I've got real moon rock from corrupt from doing this set with them. Like so, I've done a lot of shit since that bio. You know what I mean? Right. That was just from 2013. You know what I mean? Damn. I've been four, you know, post woo life, and um, since even since then, the, the, my foot's been on the gas, no breaks right. at all, like no breaks. You know what I mean? So I'm just trying to tap into every big artist, especially big big artists that come to my region. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like they call me the ambassador of the IE. Mm-hmm. You know, the Inland Empire. For people who don't know, the Inland Empire, it's the 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 county outside of LA County. We right. right there. You know what I mean? So that's the IE San Bernardino. It's a lot of about 15 cities in IE. But um, I'm the ambassador. So any person that comes to our city, pretty much or our region, I DJ for them. You right. know what I mean, we bring a lot of. Have artists. you had a chance? Because only artists I really hear screaming out like that is Audio Push. You have a chance to work with I them? I just or? did it. I know, nigga, I could call Price Tag. I just did Damn. a show with them okay. niggas. They're my niggas. Like, I know them personally. I they literally should. just, we just did a show. They had a concert um, at the House of Blues in Hollywood. Maybe, two, I can look at the date, maybe two weeks ago. Um, and I basically DJed and host that show, me mm-hmm. and my DJ crew. You know and I know they, they show, they show, yeah, them motherfucker rock. Yeah, them niggas they, be dancing. And, and they, I've been knowing Audio Push since I got to the Woo. I mean, got back from the Woo. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. 2000. Right when they was dropping their records and all that. I've been knowing them niggas. They literally from the same city, basically. And um, yeah, but I, I fuck with them niggas. Them niggas cool. Them niggas be bringing a lot of energy and shit when they perform and shit. They be turning up. So I, I know um, problem is like one of your favorites to do business with, but what, who's that artist like that you had the most fun, had the biggest crowd? Like who's if you had to have a go to artist from here on out, who would that be? Who would you double okay. back to? To to would you say to DJ for or to book like to bring uh, DJ a crowd for out? to DJ for? Damn. Um, I would I would love to DJ for YG. I ain't mm. gonna lie. He was just out here about like two weeks ago, I think yeah. it was. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like I've done shows with YG, but I never DJ his set. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? YG be bringing n- motherfuckers out. Also, Mozzie. Y'all fuck with Mozzie out here? Oh, yeah. Everybody fuck yeah, with Mozzie so, out here. Yeah, we bring Mozzie. We, we just brought Mozzie out we, uh, like three weeks ago. That nigga sold out the club. Like, mm-hmm. it was still 300 people outside. He lives out here, doesn't he? Not even. I think he lives in IE. Oh, I don't know where he lives. He, he from the Bay, though. He's from SAC. But he be everywhere. Yeah, but lives out here. He got a spot out here. Yeah, he, be, he probably he be everywhere because he be in IE a lot too. But um, and we, I got a show with the nigga December. Some he on tour right now. He come back to the IE. But yeah, Mozzie be bringing people out. I, I love the DJ for that nigga again too. That nigga be turning up. Um, but it's just different artists. I just like high energy. Anybody who's bringing, you know, the turn up, the litness. You of know course, I mean? of that's course. All, that's all it's about. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't really have too much preference on artists like that because I'm not really. My artist could DJ. Like I told you. <laughs> I mean, just because I know how they are. You know, right, what I mean, right, I don't right. got nothing against no artist. Keep pushing, keep chasing your dreams, keep you know doing what y'all do. But I'm just, it's, just, it's a lot of politics in this right. music shit. You know what I mean? And I'm just don't. Um, so, well. being that you're not the, uh, the the artist DJ, yeah. and you're definitely uh, trying to build your name more than making someone else sound good. Do you are you ever going to see yourself going down that Khaled route? Do you think a compilation tapes coming, at least of artists that you gather yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely that's actually in the works right now. I'm about to um, start bringing back my grind season tapes. I actually okay, started I those that. at the Woo, mm-hmm. where it was a compilation of the popping people. Right. And so now I'm gonna bring those back, and there's gonna be a compilation of the popping people in local places. Right. You know what I mean? So I might have a grind season in Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and it'd be all the local niggas that's really popping. And it's a it's a bunch of them out here. You know it's what I mean? So that's for sure. what the goal is right now. I just got so much on my plate, but like that's been. We've been working on that for a minute, so mm-hmm. we should start dropping a few first. It's already three grind season tapes done, recorded. Mm-hmm. Three different artists already done. You know what I mean? I just really? haven't, yeah, I just haven't. We haven't dropped them at right. all. You know what I mean? So um, we'll be bringing them out soon. I'm just I, pushing this DJ shit and the mood as you shit. And then you know I did the uh, Dino City Lifestyle movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you uh, was able to see that too. So I'm trying to tap into the little acting world too. So. Niggas just be trying to stay busy, so but the tape is coming. I'm trying to be on the Cali shit for sure, for sure. Okay, okay. Now what? Now go a little more into the Dino Lifestyle movie. So what exactly is that? Because I'm not familiar. Okay, the Dino City Lifestyle. Shout out to my boy P Stacks. He um 
he was dropping mixtapes. Okay. His first mixtape was Dino City Lifestyle, San Bernardino. So Dino City Lifestyle. He just dropped the second one, but he dropped it with a movie. So mm-hmm. it was just a, a basic movie of the hood life in San Bernardino. People who don't know San Bernardino is a very crazy, dangerous city. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, he just kind of sh- showed or, you know, a little bit of the lifestyle of how it is in San Bernardino from, mm-hmm. like, the gang members from the streets and shit like that. And I had played just, like, a, a role of an African, I would say African kingpin of the city. Um, he robbed it or killed one of my uncles in the Not movie. too far from, from right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's really, I was really on some killer shit, like oh, really on some you. like right, drug right. pin, like, yeah, type shit, you know. So he had killed my, my uh, uncle in the movie or whatever. So basically I got to avenge him, you know right. what I mean? So that's the Dino City Lifestyle 1, and we working on the second one. Okay, so, where can uh, the people find that at? Um, they had to come to San Bernardino. Oh, they got to come to the yeah, city. Yeah, they got to come to the Dino and get it. <laughs> I, bro, I've been telling bro, but he, he ain't putting it on YouTube or nothing. He's no, that's real. Yeah, so that's he's real. trying to do legit, which I respect 100%. So, yeah, um, I'm sure they're going to come out soon. Mm-hmm. I know he got to start branching out outside of the IE because a lot of people want to see it, though. Right. But it, it's been doing good numbers. It was dope. Just being that experience, um, being in a cool little movie, you know. Yeah, something different for you. Yeah, something tight. So I kind of want to... Obviously, sound like you had a big role in it, too, at Yeah, that. yeah. I was, it was tight. It was tight. I want to kind of dibble and dab in that shit a little bit more, you know okay. what I mean? Like, take the little acting shit serious, you know right. what I mean? Like I said, the music shit is temporary, you know what I mean? We trying to still branch out and do many and multiple things as a brand. Of course. You know what I mean? Of so. course. Um, that is something that I did see on the bio, and as soon as I saw it, I instantly started remembering the videos getting shared, and then I saw the work that you did with Revolt TV. Oh man! Now the the Bruh. quote that you had on your on your uh, bio was that you're the most one of the most explosive performances they've ever seen. Love. That's love. Love to Revolt TV for one number one. I was on that show for four times, um, and I fuck with Revolt. I don't know if uh, Tiffany still works there. That's the person who was booking me for it. Um, mm-hmm. Super dope. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I had did a show. This is how that worked out. That was my very first time on the show. Very first time. I got a call early as fuck in the morning. Super early. Like, hey, bro, um, they need a DJ for Revo. Uh, can you do it? But you have to be in Hollywood at like 1030. Oh, shit. Mind you, bro, it's like, not, it's like I would say, realistically, it's like 8. I'm still in bed, and I'm an hour and a half away. That's though. when you say you got called that morning. I'm like, 1030, that's still the morning. <laughs> like, literally, bro, I'm, I got called that morning, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I was like, hell yeah, like, there's nothing that's going to stop me from this shit. Of fuck course. Yeah, you know, so I'm, bam, we get out there. You know, they like, oh, you're going to be doing a show for OG Ma- um, Mako. Okay. Um, was, he was popping at the time. I don't know if he's still popping. But anyway. Eh. Yeah. 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 But yeah, you get it. <laughs> I know you so yeah, uh, we did a show. He was going to perform twice. Um, one upstairs, downstairs on the main stage, you know. So we did that. And um, at the time, he had a record that was out, you know what I mean, that was super dope. I loved it. But it was, the record was Fuck Him. So, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, the song was Fuck Him, Fuck Him, Fuck Him. You know what I mean? So I, I just knew we could, he wasn't going to pick that to perform that on, on national TV, right. obviously. So then we do his the song that he had popping out at the time, um, which I, I can't remember. Um, whatever song he had popping out at the time. And then as soon as he was walking off stage, I just dropped the record. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I just dropped it. Fuck it. Because you know? <laughs> I want to hear this record. Yeah. And then he came back on stage, and the crowd was going crazy. The cameraman mm-hmm. came back out. It was fucking lit. Because it was, it was so lit that they, that was the one they used. So they ended up using that one? They wow. start, And that wasn't planned. That wasn't... Rehearse or none of that. You feel mm-hmm. me? It was just naturally lit as fuck, and that's why they was on that shit was on the website for maybe years saying that shit. You mm-hmm. feel me? It was dope, and then that's what they hit me back about three times after that. I did like regular shows. I did my own personal like segment, like quick little segment. So it was dope though. It was dope. That made me really want to do more TV. That's why I really never branched into the radio life mm-hmm. because right before I wanted to do radio, I did that, and I'm right. like, oh shit, this that changed cool. the whole game. It was dope, man. It was super dope. I'm so glad I had that experience. Like, damn, that shit was cracking. Take there's, me a, back. there's a screenshot somewhere on my Facebook because I remember when I came across. I remember you were talking about it for a little while. Yeah. And then when I finally came across it, and it happened so fucking quick, yeah. I was like, oh, she had to go back on the uh, on the TiVo or whatever, and yeah. kept a picture. It was somewhere in my in my profile. And I've always wanted to give you, you know, what I'm saying your accolades for that thank one, man. You, that was thank you, thank that was you, dope, bro. Yeah, it that was, was super dope because see. what made that super dope. And to this day, when you bring it up, it's just I'm like, damn, that was dope because I've always wanted to DJ on 106 in Park. Mm-hmm. Always. Ah, uh, they that, took that. <laughs> as soon as I started DJing, that was like my goal. Like I got a DJ on fucking one hundred six. Even the Bow Wow one hundred six when he had. The I didn't four. give a fuck about all of that. You know what I mean? Like I, I, at one time I was a Bow Wow fan, so I wasn't. Really I think tripping. We, we all were. Yeah, so point. I wasn't yeah. tripping about that. I just wanted to DJ on one hundred six and party. Right, like that was just my goal. And 
you know, after moving back home and shit, then it like fell. Like it, it started whatever. They had their own little situation going on, so it wasn't like how it used to be. Right. And then revolt. Diddy started revolt and shit. And then I did that. I'm like, because before even I did, I was like, damn, this is low key like the 106, mm-hmm. the revolt live segment show they used to have. That was like the West Coast 106 and Park. Even though people weren't tuned in like they were for 106 and Park, to me that was like the West Coast 106 and Park. Right. So me doing that shit, that was like it was kind of like a small. You know, I couldn't get to 106, but I still did. Something that was close to that, you know what I mean? Definitely. So it was dope. I, I love that shit. Hopefully they can reach out to me again, shit. I would love to be back on Revo. I don't see why not, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm going to try to, maybe I got to reach out to them. That's probably what it is. I'm going to see. What's up? Hey, get the bug back in there. Oh, you said it was uh, Tiffany? Or yeah, yeah. Like I, I got to actually reach out to her and see if she's She probably still, still got there. that plug. Oh, dude, she's, that's the homie. But I just don't know if she still worked there. Because right. she be posting pictures in different countries and shit. So I don't know what right. the fuck. Yeah, so. But uh, yeah, it was dope. And then, like I mentioned in the beginning of this, man, I, I love seeing so many people that we came up with. And seeing y'all go from where you were there to what you're doing now and every day and actually making your brand and building your brand and, you know, it's like making money off of it and doing yeah. what you got to do. Like, it's amazing to me. Yeah, man. That's the number one thing is making money off of it. Of course. Yeah. Now, you know, she got Mood of Juice. She got DJ and all these sessions, did Revolt, did the movies. So what's next for DJ Mood? What's the what's the next big move? The next big move? Ooh, is continuing doing the mixtape. I mean, well, we're going to start dropping the tapes. That's right. definitely. And then, you know, still start dabbling to the little TV. Um, right. I just want to kind of do, not to just say TV, I just want to do anything that has to do with TV shows, movies, whatever the fuck. You know right. what I mean? So I might have to go sit down and talk to an agent. But for the most part, DJ Muda, we just pushing the brand, the um, IE ambassador. You know, I'm staying booked in every single club. You come to the IE, tapping with DJ Muda, you know I'm doing it all. Um, and, you know, just pushing the juice. That's The juice has actually been on my plate for the most part for the last few months. I mean, mm-hmm. like, DJing has always been my heart, but, like, that's what we doing right now. Right. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much what is the number one goal right now. For, but for DJ Muda, just continue pushing the brand as well. You know what I mean? I want to kind of set up, like, a, a local tour, me hitting some different little cities and states and rocking out to these clubs and shit like that. But that's always in the works. It's always With DJ Muda, it's always some crazy new shit that's going to just happen. I could wake up tomorrow and the Clippers hit me up again. Like, okay, oh, yeah. Because I DJ for the Clippers a few times, too. So. Oh, that was just a real subtle nod. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, the so, Clippers, too. We got them. Yeah, so, you know, they might just hit me up. You know what I mean? So, like I said, when Revo hit me, it was early in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's why I call myself... And people at home call me Mr. Always Book because it's always something. Right. You know I, mean? I came to Vegas. That's a great nickname to have. I came to Vegas to bring the homie out here and to push the juice, and I'm doing radio. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it literally, with, when it comes to DJ Mood, it's not like Mood Juice. It's not really planned. The shit just happened. You know what I right. mean? Of course, the big trips and the out-of-town shit, we, of course, we plan to those. But for the most part, a lot of things just spree of the moment, man. Of and course. that's how God works. You know what I mean? Definitely. He just, you know what? Here, go do something big real quick. You right. know what I mean? That's what he do. Wake up. You know what I mean? You've been working hard. Go. Go go reap the you know Throw go you out of town real quick, real quick. you know I ain't or go do this you feel me so that's what's dope about this lifestyle period mm-hmm. you never know what comes but if you stay positive you, you just know it's gonna be a positive outcome no matter what I just right. know that I know something positive is coming I can't tell you exactly what but I just know the next time you see me we are gonna be talking about something oh damn mood I seen something or ooh, ooh, you know so it's just all right. about what, what what God's timing you know what I mean that's what we working on man it's a um it's a dope story man. I've been talking about, I've been talking about this with my co-host, getting you on the show for a cool minute. But again, I always see you moving, so I'm like, yeah, I got to catch you in that cool little window. So this was a solid window to catch you, and I definitely appreciate you coming through, yeah, I'm glad I was sharing your story. Uh, just get back to this here, Muda Juice. Let the people know where they can find it, where they can get it from, and how you're going to get it to them. At Muda Juice on IG. Um, DJ Muda as well as my IG. You can find us at Muda Juice. I mean, I'm sorry, Muda Merchandise at BigCartel.com. And you could just, like I said, any city, any state you in, reach out to our IG. Let us know where you're from so we can try to get the product in that city. we working on Vegas right now, the IE. we out there. Uh, and we just continue to push the brand so you know if you see Muda Juice, you know it's lit. Pull it up. It's healthy. It's the, it's the new wave. It's the alternative way of, discreet way of medicating. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know? And what about the uh, the clothing, the apparel? The clothing, uh, the clothing. We also got Muda Juice merch, hats, ski masks, shirts. Um, we got we about to have some sweatsuits coming too. That's also on my Big Cartel page, Muda Merchandise at Big Cartel. It should be all on our uh, DJ Muda website. That's getting worked on right now. It's under construction. So okay. the, Mo- the DJ Muda uh, website should launch by January at the top of the year, like okay. the first day. So we should be doing that. 
All right. I got to make sure I get you a hat, too, man. Oh, definitely. Before I get up out of here. I got you. Of course. I, I'll make sure I hang it up in here somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I, make I sure definitely everybody plug love in. the fact that, um, like you was talking about the Wu people, you know, everybody's striving to do what they love. And exactly. Doing what, you know, fits them the best. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So shout out to everybody. From the Wu especially, that's you of know course. chasing their dreams. Because I think with the Wu thing, it's just like it's really a close-knit situation, right. like close-knit family. Like, I don't know any other school that people, like, you know what I mean? People mm-hmm. like, damn, you still going back to You can literally you st- name every name that's on the yard when you when You, you feel me? There. Like, motherfuckers yeah. like, damn, you still got homies up there. Y'all still close. Y'all still mm-hmm. cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's how it is. Shout out to the Go Get Us, GGNT. My boys, they got they, they podcast, too, going on roundtable shit. So right, shout out to right, them. Right. I see y'all niggas all doing y'all thing, man. So it's all love, man. We appreciate it, love, definitely. All love. Shout out to the beat. For sure. So where can people find you at? What are the g- give me some upcoming shows? Of upcoming course, give me your shows, social media. Shows, Hold on. Okay, I got um Money Bag Yo next Tuesday at Sevilla's in Riverside, California. I'm doing some with Hazel E from Bad Girls Club. Mm. I think she was on Bad She was on one of those reality TV shows. Hazel E. I've, she's on Love uh, Hip Hop. Is it Love and Hip Hop? Or or Love and Hip Hop or one of those TV shows, I forgot. Mm. Um I'm doing a show with her on Sunday in LA. A little fashion event. Um and then I'm doing the uh, It's Lit Sesh in L.A. next Saturday. It's, it's a weed event out there in L.A. So if you're out in L.A., um, It's Lit Sesh is going to be, you can go on my IG and shit. You can come by Moody Juice, too. We're going to have a booth there. We're going to be selling Moody Juice. I'm going to be DJing. It's going to be like 100 vendors, a lot of artists performing, a lot of weed vendors. It's going to be lit. So, yeah, we staying moving every day, every yes, day. Sir. You know, trying to figure out what's popping out here in Vegas, you know, for the weekend. What's the uh, What's the IG again? At DJ Muda, DJ M U D A, and my Muda Juice is at Muda Juice, M U D A Juice. Got you, got you. Uh, at Big Los UTC on Twitter, uh, Big Los IG on Instagram. Make sure y'all check out the website, beatnetworkonline.com. And of course, December 9th, man, if y'all can make it back out for the party, that'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be a good time. Now, as I know it's a lot going on, but if, yeah, if it can't happen. What day does that fall on the Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. December well, next 9th. Next time we're going to have to be, book me, and we're going to really make sure. I got you. you know? I got but you. Yeah, it will be another one. We're going to definitely keep on pushing. You know, it's all grind season from every of aspect. Everybody's working. So if you're working, keep it going. Grind season, y'all. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we appreciate your support. And as always, Big Los. Shout out to Hollywood Kev. It's the noise.